Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. It's Malia. <laughs> um, I hope you all are having a great day and that you're doing well. And yeah, today is a video that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. We'll see if I can get through it. <laughs> I will have to say I am quite anxious. <laughs> but <sighs> yes, so this will... I'm just going to talk about my experiences with watching my mom I struggle <laughs> through cancer and yeah so <laughs> I have some notes right here if I'm looking that way that is why and yeah I'm gonna try to get through it make it as coherent as possible and you probably have seen some videos so I started some video diaries soon after she passed because it was easier and less intimidating than trying to write down what I was feeling in a journal because I had so much that I felt that I couldn't necessarily describe and the thought of writing it down was too overwhelming but I wanted to document it because I knew that this was something I was going to want to look back on and I already have smudged mascara <laughs> I don't know why I even bothered um, but yeah so you probably saw some of those recordings and those are a lot of the raw moments to grieving and to experiencing something like this. So without further further ado, <laughs> let's jump on into the video and yeah this is a story about my mom dying of cancer. And all of that I thought my mom was like really heartbreaking and it's all these oh, <laughs> all of these girls coming with their moms. And yeah, that was tough, because I was like, I won't get that. And I know that all these big moments in my life are going to be really hard now because of that. Like, when I get engaged or when I get married or when I'm buying dresses, like, it's going to be really tough because I just want her to be there. Okay, I just got back from running. <laughs> I look disgusting, but this is a personal video, so it doesn't really matter. Today has been hard. Wow, I look so gross. <laughs> um, Yeah. I feel like it's hitting me like a brick the last few days. And last night I dreamt that she was still alive, but that she was pregnant with cancer. And I was like, how are you supposed to have a baby if you're dying of cancer? Like, you're not gonna be strong enough to create a baby. And so I just remember that. And today, it's so funny what triggers, but I wore her running jacket and it's hard. It's really hard. Cause this is hers, I don't want to be wearing it. She deserves to wear it, but you know, I'm in it and I just ran in it and it's nice. <laughs> I just wish it, it could have been her. And yeah, it's just been really tough. So that's that. So I'm about to go into work. Very sad again today, kind of weird. It's funny cause I haven't been affected this much I think at all so it's kind of weird how everything is hitting me now it's like over a month and a half that it's all happened and I'm affected <sighs> anyways I'm gonna go into work and probably just shake it off even though all I want to do is just get a good cry and talk to someone but every time I try to talk to people about it they don't necessarily get it, and so it's just very, like, I don't know, it's, it doesn't fill that void of feeling alone in this all, so, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna go to work, <laughs> and that's an update. Okay, <laughs> so I just got out of the temple for the first time <laughs> since my mom has died. <laughs> I did not expect to come out like this. <laughs> but I got to go with my dad, which was really special. And I was doing really good. I noticed that I was disassociating a lot. I was, I couldn't really pay attention. <laughs> I couldn't really pay attention or anything like that. And then I got to the veil and I just lost it. <laughs> I was like, I was crying so bad. It was not embarrassing because like, understandable but <laughs> I don't know it just hit me like I couldn't control it and 
I think it's just the fact that she went through the veil. <laughs> and I, I lost it. I cried so hard. I don't know. It's just hard. And sometimes I don't know why it's so hard. I feel like it shouldn't be hard. I don't know why. I feel like... I don't know, and I feel like I don't feel enough emotion. <laughs> like, I'm crying, but I don't know if I necessarily feel it. <laughs> I just can't grasp it. I still can't. <laughs> and, and I miss her. <laughs> I miss who she was before she got sick. <laughs> I miss doing things with her. I should be able to go to the temple with her. I should be able to go to lunches. And to go to the store. And to go running. All those things I should be able to do. But I don't. And that's okay. I know that everything's going to be fine. And I'll get better. And that one day I'll actually be able to like process what is happening. But it's a lot a lot and sometimes I feel like I can't handle it or that I don't want to handle it not that I can't it's just I don't want to I don't want to feel the pain and the stress and the anxiety of dealing with life right now like I want to stop everything I don't want to I don't want to work work has become such an anxious place and I just don't know if I can handle this I know I can, that's the thing, I know I can handle it, I just don't want to. It's so much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just brought back up some emotions that I haven't felt in a long time. But, I was going back through some of the video diaries that I did. From when my mom passed. <laughs> it's almost been three months, like... It's the 12th of March, and it's kind of crazy. I miss her, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to hopefully film a video today talking about it, and I really hope that this can help some people, <laughs> because I get it, it's lonely, even when you have amazing, amazing support. And maybe not necessarily lonely. I've been using that word a lot, but I don't necessarily feel lonely. <laughs> maybe just, I don't know, alone in a situation. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just hard, especially because people have gone through what I've gone through. But it's hard to talk to people that knew her <laughs> and knew exactly what I went through. That's when my knowledge of like my faith really, really comes into play because I do believe that my savior, Jesus Christ, has gone, gone through everything that I could ever, ever experience on this earth. And even though I might feel far away from him because I feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to, I know that he's right by me no matter what. I don't know that my mom is too. <laughs> Even though I don't necessarily feel her all the time. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I just got off the phone with my dad, he called. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know where I was, so I'm just gonna kinda start from the beginning. About like I won't go I won't make this like crazy crazy long, but the reason I'm filming this video is because I know throughout the whole journey of watching my mom get super sick and with just the whole process, I looked, <laughs> I really looked for someone that I could like watch or like, I looked for videos specifically here on YouTube that I could watch and relate to and just not feel alone. And so that's really why I want to create this video because I know what it's like to go through something really, really hard and to watch somebody that you love just deteriorate and it's not fun and it's not easy and it's nice to feel understood and heard so that's why I'm filming this video if you are struggling with grief 
or with loss or with anything like that, I really hope that you know that this is like a safe place and that it's okay. Whatever feelings you're feeling, it's okay. And just feel them and let them pass and let them stay if they need to. And yeah. Oh wow, I'm going way back. <laughs> I remember, I am such a crier as well, so it will be really hard for me not to cry. <laughs> but I remember the night that we found out that she was had cancer. And I remember she was going to the doctors because, so she was a runner. Me and her used to run all the time. Ooh, <laughs> I already can't do this. Yes, so she was a runner. <laughs> Hardcore runner, like running ultra marathons and everything. And that was the first thing that cancer took from her. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, so she went for a run one morning and her hip really hurt. She's like, shoot, I broke a bone. I broke my hip, like, oh my gosh. So she went into the doctor all frustrated, like, oh, I did something to my hip and I'm not going to be able to run tomorrow. <laughs> That's the type of person that she was. And she went in and they kept doing tests and then they did more tests and more tests. And I knew something was up because she kept going back to the doctors and to the hospital to get these tests done. And <laughs> me and my mom were best friends, like literally best friends. Like that whole mother teenage conflict never happened between us. She was everything to me, and I'm really trying to get through this without crying, but yeah, I remember she sat us all down. She would always do that. Whenever she wouldn't tell me the news over the phone, I knew that it was bad, and it started one night. I think I was a sophomore in high school. Yeah, I think I was a sophomore. And she sat us all down and she's like, I have cancer. <laughs> and her being her would get the most rare cancer that's not treatable with chemo or radiation. Um, she had a chondrosarcoma in her hip, so it's a bone cancer that has about a 5%. I'm not really sure the percentage rate actually, but a very low survival rate unless you make it to five years, then your survival rate kind of skyrockets and it, it's a lot better. And so we did that and she went through all these surgeries. Like we were lucky because she, it was chemo and radiation resistant. So she didn't ever have to go through chemo. She did try radiation in the end, but yeah. So long story short, she had multiple surgeries to try to get rid of it. And we thought it was gone and it was for a little bit. And then it came back. And then she had another surgery and it was gone for a bit and then it just came back and so towards the end of it it had jumped everywhere it started out in her hip and then it went to her knee and then it went to her arm and then finally it jumped to her lungs <laughs> and then it was just everywhere so I think it was about four or five years that, like, from the beginning to the end that she really battled through. She went from running every single day, every day, if you know her, you know, <laughs> to not being able to walk <laughs> and just sitting in a chair <laughs> all day, every day. It was really hard on her, understandably, because <laughs> she was somebody that would never sit still and she went to practically being bedridden. <laughs> and so, um, she was pretty good for a good majority of the time. I think she was in a, in a lot more pain than most of us realized. But this happened and then I remember when I left on my mission, so as you guys know, I left the country for 18 months to go serve people and to teach them about God and about Jesus Christ. and. I was really scared when I left because I thought I would never see her again. I thought that she wouldn't make it to the end of my mission, but I remember very vividly 
just kidding, I get this feeling in my heart that God was going to take care of her and that I would see her. <laughs> and so I wish I had held on to that because I, I still stressed about it. But I did make it to the end of my mission and she was still there to greet me. She could still walk <laughs> with a cane to give me a hug after 18 months. And it's a very special moment. <laughs> but that was really special and I couldn't get over how proud she was that I had made that decision to leave no matter how hard it was. And so yeah, and then it wasn't until after my mission where she really started to decline and pretty rapidly. So it was June of 2021 that I got home about nine months ago and she really started to decline pretty, pretty quickly. And I remember in November she was put on hospice and that was tough. And then since she was put on hospice, she was put in hospice in November. And then she passed away on December 25th, I mean 30th, December 30th. <laughs> December 25th was the last day that I saw my mom <laughs> alive. <laughs> it was really hard at this point because she was so sick and so, so, so skinny. <laughs> She looked like a skeleton, and she could barely be awake. And when she was, she was throwing up, <laughs> or coughing, or crying, because she was in so, so much pain. I remember she would just cry to me <laughs> about why she was still here. <laughs> about why God hadn't taken her yet. <laughs> and I would just have to tell her, I don't know. <laughs> And let me tell you, <laughs> it is a whole different thing when you're watching somebody that you love die, but then they're begging you to let them go. So <laughs> this all comes into play, but long story short, she was really, 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 really sick and it was really hard to watch. She was... Just really sick. And December 25th, I remember <laughs> my dad invited us over for like two hours because it's like all she could handle. And <laughs> she purposely slept all day so that she could be awake. <laughs> and I have a picture from this day, but I remember one of my coworkers. <laughs> Her name is Sophia. Hopefully she doesn't hate me for saying that. But she made me this sweet, sweet bracelet for her Christmas. And I wore it to my mom's and I showed her. I was like, Mom, look, my coworker made me this bracelet and I love it. And my mom reached over and she touched it. Ooh. And she was like, oh, it's so pretty. She's like, does she know that I make jewelry too? And my mom used to make like us jewelry all the time. And I was like, no, I'll have to tell her. She's like, you should, because it's really cute. And that was the most lively and like normal I had seen my mom in months. And I, it just meant everything to me. Like literally a bracelet gave me that, that memory. <laughs> and so, And so, that was, that's my, one of my last memories with her. Then D December 30th happened, and this was a day where I was at work. I actually got off early because we were slow. And I remember, I was like, oh, I should go home. But I didn't. <laughs> I don't know why. I really think it's because God wanted me to have a positive last memory and not just a bad one, <laughs> but <laughs> but December 30th I was at home <laughs> and I took a nap and I remember I was 
I was like, I'm gonna have a good night. I'm gonna take care of myself. I'm gonna relax and I'm gonna be happy. <laughs> And so I like turned on one of my favorite shows that I was watching. I went and got dinner and I heard my sister laughing um, in the other room. And I was like, oh, haha, she's enjoying life or whatever. And then she knocks on my door and she comes in. She's like, Malia. I was like, yeah. She was like, it happened. I was like, no. <laughs> she's like, it happened. I was like, no. <laughs> she's like, it happened. I was like, why don't I feel... I kind of freaked out because I was like, why don't I feel sad? I was like, I don't know how to feel. And I was like, like it was just so weird. <laughs> and then I drove over to some friends, to my coworkers actually, and I told them. And then I drove over to my dad's. <laughs> and... I walked in. <laughs> wow, I haven't like spoken these these memories out loud, so I'm kind of like reliving them right now. <laughs> so I'm sorry that this video is literally just me crying, <laughs> but hey, that's who I am. <laughs> so I remember walking in, and my dad came out of the room, and he just he just cried, and I just cried, <laughs> and. I don't think any of us really knew what to do, but we were all in kind of like go mode, like, okay, we gotta get the funeral, get it ready to be buried and all of this. And so, <laughs> because my mom knew that she was going to pass, she planned everything, her funeral, she made final gifts and everything, and we didn't have to do anything except for organized transportation. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and so, yeah, we had to wait a week for the funeral and I remember um I my mom asked me before she died to dress her to dress her body and I remember when I saw her for the first time I was very shocked very shocked because she looked so different like it was her but it wasn't her like it just blew my mind because like our spirit, like what makes us us is the only thing that really makes us us, you know? Like I saw her body there, but it didn't look like her because she didn't, her spirit was gone, you know? And so that just was kind of cool for me to learn that our spirits really are real. But anyways, <laughs> so yeah, I dressed her. And that was hard, but also very special. I remember I touched her, like, forearm because it felt normal. And then I touched her hair because I used to always do her hair. And then, yeah, fast forward to the funeral and everything. That was good. Um, we drove her up to Manassas, Colorado, <laughs> to be buried um, next to our family. And, yeah. It was a lot all at once, but I guess into like the grieving now, <laughs> so it was funny because I was very, I want to grieve and I want to grieve now so that I can get over it. And I was very much like, okay, I'm ready, let's do this. And I do feel like I, it's weird what your body does subconsciously because I would cry. But emotionally, I couldn't feel anything, but I cried and cried like I like sobbed. Like, I remember I got home one day and I just fell to the floor and I just cried. Like I just couldn't fathom what was happening. And I'm not even looking at my notes. But yeah, I couldn't even fathom what was happening. I couldn't grasp it and um, yeah, so that was one weird thing for me is that I like cried without emotion and I shook, like I shaked really bad. Long story short, I realized just as you can't force yourself not to grieve, you can't force yourself to grieve at specific times. Like, it didn't start hitting me until a month and a half later where I really started to feel the emotional pain of it all and it was it was tough and like I still think of going through it like even like two nights ago so one thing 
that I think was me trying to wrap my head around what was happening was whenever I would fall asleep, you know when you're like in and out of sleep? In my head, I would just repeat, she's gone. Like, she's gone. Like, I just couldn't grasp it, so I would just keep repeating that. And I think it was so that my brain could realize that it was real. And I hadn't done that in a while, but literally two days ago, I was laying in bed and it happened again. And it kind of like took me back because it was like, wait, this is really real. Like, you haven't seen her in almost three months. That's something that I realized was that because she was so sick and in so much pain, I never really allowed myself to long for her because she was in so much pain and I didn't want her to prolong that, if that makes sense. And so when she got to that point, it was more like, okay, Heavenly Father, please just take her. Like, she is suffering like none other. She went almost a month without food. Like, how is that even possible? She would just drink juices and that's literally all she could do. She would like get little sponges of water to keep her mouth moist because she couldn't even do that. Okay. I didn't allow myself to long for her because she was in so much pain. And so when she was gone, I was kind of like, okay, she's out of that pain. But also I'm like, I don't have my mom anymore. Like, she won't physically be at my wedding. I can't go to lunches with her. I can't go home and talk to her when I'm stressed. <laughs> I remember I got really nervous for moving into this new place like the day before I moved in and I kind of broke down and I was just like I wish I could talk to her <laughs> anybody that knows me and my mom they know like she was my go-to whenever I was stressed if I talked to my mom I was fine <laughs> and so it's been interesting learning how to not go to her <laughs> Another weird thing that has been a part of like my grieving is I am like isolating myself like It's like I don't emotionally Or like any part of me want to I do things like I would turn down hanging out with my friends I would go to work and I'd go to school, but I would turn down these opportunities to go out because it was just too much like the thought of it was exhausting and so I just started turning people down I just couldn't I couldn't hang out with them which sucks I had some good friends of mine and they moved and I couldn't even go say bye to them and it was interesting I wasn't expecting that part of grieving but I very much isolated myself thankfully I still like saw my family and I went to work so like it wasn't dangerous but <laughs> It definitely kind of just took a step back and really focused on myself for a little bit. I would like go hiking and try to go running and I got off social media for a bit because it was just like, what is the point? I was like, there is so much more to life than social media, but here I am, <laughs> even more involved than I was before. But yeah, and another weird thing is some of the things that trigger me for like missing my mom. A lot of little things like, I remember I worked a wedding expo with my bakery. And so I was at this wedding fair and I was selling cakes and I saw all of these daughters come in with their moms. And it was hard, it was so hard for me. Cause I won't get to do that. And like, trust me, I know. <laughs> like, I know she is still there. I believe it wholeheartedly. Whenever I want to feel her, I go running. Because that was our thing. And that is where I feel her the most. I don't feel her. That is where I feel her the most. And so I know that she's there. I know that she loves me and is watching over me. <laughs> and she's with the rest of my family. So I know that she's there, trust me. So whenever I say that I won't have her there, I know that she will be there in spirit and that she's gonna be around me. Whew. 
but yeah, running is one of the few places where I feel any sort of connection to her. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, I wanted to film this video so that others know that they're not alone. And if I can just, if you can just remember one thing from me from this time is, <laughs> I don't know if you're religious or not, but I promise that those that you love are still there. Like they are. And I know that God has a bigger plan for all of us. And it, sometimes it sucks. <laughs> like it sucks to find out what that plan is, but I promise that somehow and in some way and shape, it's all going to be okay. And I believe that I'm going to see my mom again. I know it. I know it in my heart. And there's nothing anybody could say that will change that. Because I believe it. I do. And so, please stay strong. You got this. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I love you all, and thank you for watching this if you have, and I'm doing okay, I promise, and yeah, if you want to see more from me and see more of like, what life is like after losing your mom, wow, well, like and subscribe and join this little family because we got this, we can handle whatever, <laughs> whatever comes our way, and I firmly believe that. So, thank you again for watching, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!